Probably one of the easiest things I've had to learn in the last 10 years was how to use AI in the workplace. I'm serious about this. And what's more, it didn't take me long and it has made my work life a lot easier. My goal over the next few videos we'll post on this channel is to share that information with you so you can do the same. If you give me just a few minutes each day, I am confident that within a week, you will become a master of these really simple skills and probably take them to the next level. While the examples will be largely from the accounts payable and accounting space, the information can be easily translated for any other business professional. Future episodes will address simple ways you can use AI to simplify your work life, some real practical examples, why it's critical that you stay current on AI, and its impact on the job market and how to use AI to search and land your dream job. Let's get started with this episode. Um, here are some tips that you need to remember when using any of the AI tools. Tip number one, these tools are easy to use and many of them are free, which is my favorite kind, if I'm gonna be honest. So don't be afraid to try them. Everything I know, I taught myself through trial and error. Not to brag too much about it, there wasn't much error. It's that simple. Tip number two, play around with these tools. If you don't get the results you want, adjust your query. Simple example, I asked Microsoft Copilot for a picture of an alarm clock for a talk I was going to give. It told me where I could buy pictures of an alarm clock, which was not what I wanted. So I learned I had to reward my request to say, draw me a picture of an alarm clock. Tip number three, learn how to phrase your questions. And remember those that work for you so you can use them over and over again, just like I did when I realized I had to say, draw me a picture, not get me a picture. Tip number four, be precise as possible and give as much information as possible to the AI tool. The more information you give it, the better tailored the answer will be for your particular need. So for example, if you're going to rewrite an email to your boss, you might say, rewrite the following and make it sound more professional. Or you might say, make it sound more friendly or whatever however you're trying to come across. Don't be afraid to ask it to redo something if you're not happy with what it gives you back. Again, you might say make it more business-like or whatever you're trying to achieve. And of course, you're going to review whatever it gives you back and probably tweak it a little bit. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, tip number five, don't use jargon or abbreviations that the AI is not likely to understand. We may get to the point where the AI knows what you're talking about, but as it stands today, it's better to be more precise. So for example, you may know in your whatever you're working on that PT stands for part-time, but the AI tool might think it stands for something else. The more niche the jargon or the abbreviation, the more likely it is that the AI tool will get it wrong. Tip number six, make sure when you're asking AI to do something related to your spreadsheet, you use the column headers that you put in. You use the terminology that you put there. So for example, if you use the word suppliers um, in your column headings, don't substitute the word vendor when you're putting in your query. You may know that they mean the same thing, but the tool is not apt to have that same knowledge, at least for now. They're, they're continually getting better. Tip number seven, trust but verify. Let me be blunt about this. The AI tools make mistakes, so you need to check everything, and I mean everything. AI has trouble with nuance, so for example, on more than one occasion, I've had it mix up AP and AAR. I've seen it word things, for example, in ways that accounting and finance professionals just wouldn't do. So if you don't review what it writes, you could come off looking like an amateur or worse, just plain wrong. So don't forget, verify, check everything. On Polk, on Copilot, on Microsoft Copilot, they actually give you the sources of the information. And you can use these to help decide whether the information should be used or not. So for example, if you ask what's the best automation tool out there and the results come back and, and you look at the source and you see that it was the, the results said company A is the best automation tool and then you look at the source of that and it's company A's website, well, you probably don't want to uh, query. You don't want to accept that. You don't want to go with that data. This is scary if you want to know my honest opinion because you can see how easy it is for to get wrong information and also how easy it is for disinformation to spread. Uh, the AI tools are getting better, 
but they are a long way from perfect, which is kind of good news for us. Okay, and tip number eight, however many fingers, tip number eight, if you will. Um, set up accounts for yourself with Chat GPT and Microsoft Copilot and start playing around with them. And if there's any, another uh, AI tool that you've heard about that you'd like, do the same thing. Not sure how to do this? Okay, we've got talks to help you with both of these. Links to these, the talks that we've done on these tools will appear on your screen and is in the description. Good luck and hope to see you at tomorrow's session on real life applications using AI. And we'll put the link here once that session has been released. Good luck.